Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, it's Maverick here today with another episode of Shaman King. It has been a while, uh, as you guys may know, you know, Shaman King episodes were delayed because of the ongoing Olympics and whatnot. Well, it's all over now, so back to our regularly scheduled programming. Uh, where did we last left off, right? Ah, yeah, we were about to uh, get into a pretty iconic scene with uh, Anna and uh, How, of course, uh, and I do hope that they... Uh, focus on it a little bit more as for what you and the others are doing. I honestly can't quite remember I mean, this is already when they they've met the X laws, right? And um, you know for, for any of you guys who actually might be seeing this for the first time uh, They are quite the important group uh, to look out for in the future. I'm not gonna get into any spoilers Let's just get right into the episode um, and take it from there All right, let's begin in three two one play Aha, yep, starting right here. <sighs> She's like, my status is being threatened. Hey. <laughs> ah, it has been a while. Eighteen episodes, eh? I'm just thinking right now. At this, right? It has like fifty something episodes, right? If I recall correctly. So literally an ear long anime. <laughs> uh, it's really <laughs> now the funny thing here is that even this this opening song now it's kind of being um now when I when I when I watch Shaman King, right, I always get very very nostalgic because obviously this is something from my childhood and whatnot. But you know, the funny thing is at this point, even this song itself, even though it's the opening theme for, you know, the new uh, remake, right? It's actually already evoking nostalgic feelings to me as well. I mean, it is being sung by Hayashibara san, uh, and it's in a similar style, so. That's true. And it's like, I take no shit from
Uh, I feel like... <laughs> they should have had her said, said that line while showing the slap. They kind of like jumped the gun, I feel, a little bit. But anyways, this was probably one of my favorite moments in the original manga, like... And they actually kind of, uh, they actually kind of also removed some dialogue from Manta as well, who has really, like, like, who is this guy who dares call Anna directly by her name and, and, you know, what, all that. But yeah, Anna is badass. She just slapped how. <laughs> just goes with the flow or rather the world goes with his flow Oh, you have only scratched the surface, Horahara. I feel like they shouldn't have translated it as Hal's minions there. Because that Yeah, you know, what 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 the dude was saying there was out of Hal's companions. There is a subtle difference here, right? Because of course saying minions really makes it seem like Hal is this great big villain. And don't get me wrong, he is this great villain, right? But that's certainly not how those who are working with him feel about him. And here we go. GS!
I guess this sort of trippy experience is only is something that you can only get through an anime adaptation. Fish and banana. GS. <laughs> Is how most translators or uh, fan translators. Translate it because it's too it's too much of a hassle to write Great Spirit every single time. The destiny that mm. Yeah, just calm down. It's really not that important. <laughs> It is pretty interesting that Manta is here at all, right? <laughs> All right, his name is Bill. Yeah. Well, you gotta earn money somehow. <laughs> A 
hundred times difference. <laughs> and they're like, <laughs> ah, it's just the way these two are. Hey. Walk away, just walk away. <laughs> But I have to say, like, um, out of out of all the uh, the characters, I definitely feel like Choco Love's introduction was the most. How can you say? Uh, the most least fought out. So here they he used the term minions, right? But again, it's kind of different. It's like who actually means uniform. Both very, very important. That is true, though. And props to Chukulov. <laughs> oh, it's just getting interesting.
<laughs> yeah, if you guys count, it's free to free. <laughs> And it's hit. <laughs> yeah, she <laughs> yeah, is like whatever. <laughs> And I do find it pretty funny that Horror just goes along with this this entire thing. And it's just like, what are these idiots? Oh, is this the time when he got introduced? All right. If you guys remember the opening, there's still one more. All right, let's see you guys after this. All right, guys, we finally reached the patch village, and we are progressing the story along nicely here. Uh, we now know of the three different uh, factions, if you will, right? House faction, the X laws, and then the third faction, which we're not going to go into, but um, you know they will, of course, have their time to shine later on. And we are also introduced to the final main characters, if you will, or at least those for our, the main group, Chuckle Love, and then of course Faust as well, though we've already known about him. Let's let's just say we are reintroduced to him right i mean i don't think it really counts as a spoiler if you just look at the opening and see clearly you know who are fighting the people that are fighting alongside yo right so um you know we got that we now learn of the tournament and of course anna and yo have met up and so on and so forth right so all is fine and dandy and now we just need to wait for yo and others to power up and for the tournament to 
be again. Uh, beyond that, though, really in this episode, um, you know, me being a a big fan of the Yo and her relationship here, and and being a fan of these two characters in general, uh, you know, I I absolutely adore two scenes in this uh, particular episode. Right, one of course is when Anna confronted uh, Hal, uh, and then the other one, of course, is their eventual reunion within the Patch Village. Now. With that being said, though, like, um, you know, I, I think I've always had this attitude that even if this is a series I really, really like, I will not be hesitant to call out things I feel like just aren't done well or properly, right? I've always said, and my philosophy has always been, if you are a true fan of the series, you know, you should do your best to complain when you feel like um, the uh, the producers, the animators, or, or, you know, whatever kind of adaption kind of media or whatnot, if they are dropping the ball, right? Um, because... And that's what a fan should do, right? Uh, and so in this one, you know, you could call me a little bit nitpicky, but I do feel like the scene with uh, Anna and Howe wasn't really uh, done to my expectations. You know, if you guys are interested, go read the, the manga chapters and whatnot. It was done, I think, a lot better. Yeah, pacing was a lot better as well. Like, you know, just to just to, to bring up some of the, the few details I feel were missing from that particular scene in the anime. Okay, number one, we, we kind of don't have, like, Manta's, um, you know, Manta's kind of... Um, uh, narration about you know about how oh, we we suddenly uh, see this this how do and how is he being so disrespectful for to Anna which is completely different from how all the others have treated her up to this point right um, even those who have been Anna's enemies uh, they've generally regarded Anna as someone who is not to be taken lightly whereas this how is is basically just like you know I, I'm I'm much better than you so I don't care you know that kind of attitude right um, so so that's number one and number two of course of course, the legendary left hand, uh, it is so important to, you know, it was an amazing scene because this is the first time we see her use her left hand here. Uh, no, it's actually two things. One, it's the first time we see, we've seen anyone block Anna's slap, and the second one is this is the first time we've ever seen Anna use her left hand to slap someone, right? So again, this kind of ties into um, how... Uh, at least in the manga, they really build up Anna's character to be this really, really strong-willed kind of independent girl, right? And she takes shit from no one. Um, and, and so, uh, within this scene, you know, being, how being able to block her, slab everybody around, you know, including Manta and, and Himoe and whatnot, they were like, what? Somebody blocked her? Wow, what the hell? And, you know, basically, kind of like overreaction, and maybe that's not exactly the, the best kind of humor, but, but I think it adds a little bit more to the the dramatic effect right and so so that's so that's one and then um you know we see her slapping we see her slapping uh how with her left hand and then also at the same time saying you forgot my left right and then of course uh, you know cue the crowd you know hollering and cheering and, and whatnot and they were also like completely shocked at something like that happened so so you know also that uh, just the timing of the things and and seeing the reactions of the people around uh that that are bearing witness to this scene i feel like is kind of important so that's why i'm saying that it doesn't really um it, I feel like the, the scene itself wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. I don't know, like, again, maybe I'm just being too nitpicky, and, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter all that much. This is not, like, a a, a story-defining moment uh, within the, the Shaman King story, right? It's It doesn't have really any long-term consequences or effects or whatnot, but I do feel that it was, at least to me, once again, a big reinforcement of Anna's character and, you know, just how much of a badass that she actually is. So, yeah. You know, unfortunate and all that but um yeah anyways just moving on here so i do recommend you guys to check out the same scene in the manga you know it's literally like a few panels in a chapter right um beyond all that and and i think one other thing is is definitely how uh how because it, it really left a big impact on me, right? Especially because, you know, we, we have this situation where Anna, of all people, was being Cabedon, which is, you know, a, a very popular, 
although quite old school, I feel nowadays, uh, kind of um, kind of thing uh, within Japanese media and whatnot, where where the guy who's about to confess to a girl or whatnot, you know, the the stereotypical uh, cool dude or or bad guy or or whatnot, you know, putting his hand on the wall and being like, hey, you know, you want to go out with me or I like you, you know, that that kind of thing, right? I, I'm not sure how if, if it's uh, really easily translated into into English or you know the concept if it's uh, easily translated into English it's, it's called cabedon which is literally um, you know slamming somebody against uh, a wall or or because you know you you put your hand on a wall and then it goes like boom and and that's why it's called cabedon right cabe means wall uh, and and you know having that kind of thing and and I, I really recall like this is how much of an impact or, or impress I shouldn't say impact how much of an impression the scene had on me I still remember like all the people around Around, you know manta and whatnot they're all like what the hell is that not really going to be you know um uh, be be sort of taken away by by how or, or something of that sort you know and and then of course we have the entire slap later on and whatnot and that kind of ties in into the reunion between how uh sorry between yo and anna as well right why um anna was getting sentimental there um and and she's being really serious like sure they they kind of have you know, subverting expectations in a way, right? The two, uh, the instant that these two met each other, they were kind of like uh, already bickering over something else, and instead of like, what, what are you here? And you know, what normal people would expect them to to say to each other. But then, you know, after that, we we see Anna showing a surprisingly soft side to her, right? You know, um, you know, uh, I might be taken away, you know, that kind of thing. And then we see Yo also realizing the gravity of the situation, and then you know, getting really serious about the entire thing as well. It, it's just these moments between them that that really makes me like love this relationship between these two so much so um yeah um right i literally spent like like seven minutes talking about this and obviously some some other important stuff happened especially choco love right um i have to say that even in the original manga i wasn't a big fan of uh of the way that Chuka Love was introduced in the series, I feel like it was kind of like an introduction of convenience. And don't get me wrong, I actually really like Chuka Love's story, uh, which we will get into in the future. Um, in fact, I've always felt, uh, no, no, he gets his he gets his good development and and whatnot. It's just that his introduction was really just kind of out there, right? Uh, you know, just suddenly, um, you know, getting here, no prior uh, introduction or whatnot, just suddenly, hey, you're part of a team, and, and that is it, right? So, uh, I do feel like it's a little bit lazy on the offer's part, if I'm being honest, but it is what it is. Uh, interesting thing, though, they did kind of change his characters, his his design. Um, I, I recall reading something about it be because they didn't want to be racist. Um, uh, well, you know... Should you say it's racist? I'm not gonna go into that discussion, but do realize that again, Shaman King is a series that was drawn 20 years ago when thing when the world wasn't so um, putting such a big emphasis on being politically correct, right? So um, yeah, maybe it's for the better. I don't know. I don't really care. So um, his, his and, and I'm just saying that his design was changed a little bit, but again, it doesn't really matter all that much. And he is native to the uh, Americas, by the way. He does come from the Americas. Uh, he is is a you know he, he is from that place and so later on when we learn of his story we will see him um you know and how he, he was shaped you know the, the background that he comes from the culture that he represents uh which is entirely local uh at to to the u.s um so yeah uh and i think that's all i want to say about chocolate love chocolate love at this point because otherwise you know anything else would be spoilers um and yeah indeed you know, we, we end on this conclusion where we are splitting up the the team, right? We are splitting up the guys, uh, Ren and um, and Horohoro and Triple Love. They are going to be on one team. Um, uh, Yo and uh, and Rue and of course a mysterious third character is going to be on the other team instead. And who exactly that third character is? Well, um, I'm just gonna keep it a secret, but I think, uh, you know, if, if you pay attention to the introduction of characters and, um, you know, the, the depiction of characters, I think uh, it will be a pretty easy guess. Anyways, that's it for episode 18 of Shaman King. Glad that we are back, and I will see you guys next time, next week, uh, in the next episode. So, stay tuned, guys. Bye-bye.